A Scandal in Bohemia is the first Sherlock Holmes story. It's really good, and it's noteworthy for having a strong female character that Sherlock cares about. Normally, Holmes has no use for women. Or men, for that matter. He seems to hate everyone as a general rule. Argopomp book review, Argopomp book review. Part 1. The great detective Sherlock Holmes only cares about logic and deduction. He doesn't care about love or feelings. The only exception is Irene Adler. This is their story. If I didn't know any better, I would say that's the introduction to a romance story, not a mystery. Holmes shows off his great detective skills by looking at Watson and deducing Watson has a clumsy servant. Watson is dumbfounded until Holmes points out that he's got muddy shoes which are badly cleaned. Obviously, there's an incompetent servant to blame because no doctor would ever clean their own shoes. Holmes received a letter saying a masked man is coming to visit tonight on top secret business. Holmes analyzes the letter and determines it's from the country of Bohemia. The unknown visitor arrives. Holmes is pretty rude until he admits he's actually the fictional king of Bohemia. He's being blackmailed by an old girlfriend named Irene Adler. She has compromising letters as well as a picture of them together. The king has paid five different people to steal the evidence from Miss Adler, but all of them failed. So Holmes and Watson are people numbers six and seven to learn about these letters. So much for keeping the situation a secret. Part two. I'm not sure why this story is split up into three parts. The other Sherlock Holmes short stories aren't split up. Anyway, part two. Holmes disguises himself as a horse groom. That instantly wins him the confidence of the local workers. They tell him about everyone in the neighborhood, including Miss Adler. She never has any visitors, except a lawyer named Godfrey Norton. Mr. Norton leaves her house in a frenzy. Shortly after, she leaves in a hurry. Holmes follows both of them to the Church of St. Monica, where they're getting married! They're having a secret wedding, and the priest forces Holmes to be the witness. This technically concludes the mystery. Now that Miss Adler is happily married, she forgets about her old boyfriend, the king, it's kind of ironic that the entire mystery would have been resolved on its own if Holmes had done nothing. Holmes still wants to get the letters and the photograph, so he reuses the trick that he used in the Darlington Substitution Scandal and the Answorth Castle business. It's kind of cruel for Holmes to tease readers by mentioning these mysteries that we'll never get to read. On the other hand, maybe it's for the best those stories were never written, because if he used the same mystery-solving trick in three separate stories, that would be repetitive. I would still read those stories, though. They sound interesting. Back to this story, Holmes's trick is to use a smoke bomb to make it look like there's a fire. This causes Miss Adler to rush to the hiding place where she's hidden the letters and the photograph. The second part of the trick is that Holmes disguises himself as an innocent person. He purposely gets injured in a fight... That way, he's taken inside Miss Adler's house to recover, and he sees the hiding spot. Holmes hears a voice speak to him once he goes home. This is a good cliffhanger, but come on! Sherlock Holmes doesn't recognize the voice of someone he talked to ten minutes ago? Part 3. The person who spoke was Miss Adler. She was warned that the king would hire Sherlock Holmes to stop her. Who gave her that warning? We never find out. It seems like an important, unsolved mystery. Miss Adler suspected that the stranger in her house might be a detective, so she secretly followed him until she realized he was Sherlock Holmes in disguise. Then she quickly gathered her belongings and fled the country with her new husband. The King of Bohemia is perfectly satisfied with his conclusion, and he considers the case to be a success. Holmes does not. Holmes gets a photograph of Miss Adler as a keepsake. You can decide if he wants to remember her, or if he just wants a reminder not to be overconfident when solving cases. The end. Post-story follow-up. It is almost criminal how Irene does not appear in any other Sherlock Holmes stories. Stories by the original author, that is. She's a popular character in Sherlock Holmes fanfiction. 
because she rivals Holmes in intelligence. And there aren't many other women in the Sherlock Holmes canon, if we're being honest. Holmes made two mistakes in this case. First, he didn't get the photograph right away. He waited until the next day so he could do it with the king. That's an understandable mistake. He wanted his client to be there for the mystery solution because the client is royalty. Holmes did plan the fake fire in advance, though. He could have told the king to show up that night at 7.30, about 10 minutes after the fire. Presumably he didn't because the king might have shown up early and ruined everything by causing a scene. Holmes' second mistake is that he assumed he was in the clear as soon as he left Miss Adler's house. He started acting like his normal self and went right back home, even though he was still in disguise as an unrelated third party. He should have checked to make sure no one was following him. Or he should have gone to a different location in order to complete his deception. Isn't it interesting that Holmes' first short story is a failure where he makes two mistakes? It's also interesting because the mystery element is mostly absent. We know who the culprit is the whole time. And it's impossible to guess where the photograph is hidden because we don't get a description of Miss Adler's house. The photograph is a cabinet. I've never heard of that type of photograph outside of this story. Apparently, it refers to a very large photograph. So large that Holmes deduces it has to be inside a house. You can't carry a photograph like that on your person. The story has two good lines, which I remembered years afterwards. Holmes says, It's a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories, instead of theories to suit facts. That's a good line. Okay, Holmes is basically saying don't jump to conclusions, but it's so fancy. The other good line is Holmes's anecdote about the difference between seeing and observing. He asks Watson how many steps are in the staircase outside. Only a true observer can answer that question, not a mere seer. I will admit, I started counting steps and staircases after I read that. You know how many times that's come in handy? None. None. That's never been useful. Overall, it's a good story. It's one of the more memorable Sherlock Holmes stories. I last read it six years ago, and when I reread it for this review, I still remembered all the major details. It's a good thing that the Sherlock Holmes short story series starts on such a strong note. It definitely pulls readers in and makes them want to read the other stories. I give Sherlock Holmes a scandal in Bohemia a thumbs up.